Annyeonghaseyo, Dulele Crafts Karen Imnida. Hi and welcome to another um, card making tutorial at Dulele Crafts. I'm having problems putting words together today and you'll have to forgive the strobing that's coming in from the window up the top there. Today I'm going to put some scraps together to make a nice little gift card and gift bag um, containing some hair accessories for a little girl. Not necessarily for your granddaughter or for your daughter, but maybe for a friend's grandchild or something, you just want to give them something just to brighten their day. Doesn't have to be a birthday card, doesn't have to be a birthday gift bag. It's just something special. Turn it into whatever you like. You can even use this as inspiration for a Christmas gift. Okay, let's get on with it. I'm going to pop the card aside for a moment and we will concentrate on the bag. These hair bands, I'll just open it up and show you. I actually sell these at market days when COVID's not around. They actually come gift bagged like so from Bows, Buttons and Bling. That's my <laughs> my bow making set um, um, name. Okay, so what I've done to make this fit in the bag properly, I've just folded it over and I popped this, whoops, just inside like that and then fold this over just to make it small enough because I'm using 6x6 paper, the bag is not going to be huge. Whoops, I'm going to bring in my scoring tool. And I simply scored. And I'm going to score these at 1 inch, uh, 3 quarters of an inch, and 3 quarters of an inch. And the same here, whoops, three quarters of an inch, three quarters of an inch, turn it around and score it at one inch. Oh, hang on, that's actually supposed to be scored at one inch on all three, on three of the sides. Oh, where is my head at today? Okay, and I'm not even on pain meds today. My knee's doing a little bit better, so I'm not even on the pain meds. There's no excuse for my silliness today. Okay, so I'm going to pop that aside. Whoops, knock my light flying. And then bring in my bone folder. And I'm just going to fold and burnish those three one-inch score lines on both pieces of cardstock well not cardstock on our paper and this is from the uh, party pack of papers called playing with patterns I'm referring to them as a party style because they've got so many different patterns in there that they're ideal for birthday parties. Okay, in with our scissors, and it's very hard to see the score lines here because of the pattern, so I'll do it from this side, and I'm just going to cut up both sides here, and then on this one, I'm going to remove that square completely and I'm actually cutting outside the square so I'm removing the score lines from the actual fold so I'm actually cutting into the rectangles there to remove those score lines just take out that little piece there that's folded over okay now I'm going to come in with my tear and tape because I want to make sure that I get as close to the fold line as possible and bring the piece up right next to that fold line and match them up 
no nails again this week so I'm having real difficulty <laughs> getting the peeling the peeling getting the paper off okay so there's one side of our box and then with this piece I'm going to come in with my tear and tape again and <laughs> I need to get as close once again to the fold as I can on there and then the same on the outside now this is quite a secure um, little bag because it will be a, because it's got a double um, layer on the bottom and it's really securely stuck it can carry um, a decent weight on it I mean you're not going to put a brick in here it's not big enough for a brick to begin with but um, you're not going to be putting anything massively heavy in a box this size anyway what I'll do is start from the bottom remember this is on the fly so I don't even I've never made this size box before so I'm just going on instinct here okay so I'm going to bring this in and line it up as close to that edge the fold edge again as possible like so and then we're just going to bring these sides up and stick them together now the top of the box is or the top of the bag is just going to fold like that so the sides can come in a little bit and yeah that's where that's going to go now I have uh, I think it's a quarter of an inch punch pretty sure it is or maybe it's three three sixteenths punch and I'm just going to pop that in as far as it will go and punch and the same on this side and that is where our ribbon will go so as you can see my little hair ties will fit in there nicely they slide down and we'll be able to still get the um, ribbon through there so we'll finish the box off after or the bag off after so I'm going to pop it over there as you can see I've been playing around so my mat's a bit grotty at the moment but we're going to bring in our card now what I did here was I've got to remember the measurements now this is a scrap so it was actually let me see it's three inches wide by four and three quarters in length and then what I did I didn't even didn't I just cut with the band and really and flipped this piece over to give a little bit of difference there now I've also got some of our um, silver foil I think this might have been brushed that came out a couple of years ago I'm going to bring in my silicon mat because as I said I go all over the place when I'm putting seal on so I want to make sure that if I do go over the edge it's not going to get stuck to my work pad now in with our silver foil this has seen better days it's got a couple of dings in it but that's fine because that's all going to be covered over okay so we've got the first piece on then we come in with our opposite our opposite piece the one that's going to be flipped I'm sticking as close to the edge as possible once again but as I said I go all over the place I'm slightly cockeyed that way just going to make sure that that point is actually glued and then come in and I'm just going to put 
a slight gap maybe one sixteenth I think it might be of an inch between those pieces now I might have a bit of glue coming out but my handy dandy glue eraser soon gets rid of that okay last piece back in with the seal and on all four sides or at least all three sides and then we're going to come back in and once again a sixteenth of an inch gap between the two pieces and then I'm going to come in with my paper trimmer just the small one unfortunately these can't be purchased which is a real shame because I think they're wonderful and this was the whole reason I rejoined Stampin Up because I got it for free at the beginning of the year okay so we're going to trim that piece off and all I'm doing is what is seeing that this paper the DSP is actually lined up with the edge and then taking it in a sixteenth again and trimming it maybe that one was a 32 <laughs> okay so we've got this piece done now you'll be looking at these pieces thinking what the heck okay so we're going to bring the scoring tool back in our simply scored and what I'm going to do is score at a quarter and then at a half and then at three quarters and an inch and do that every quarter inch all the way to the end there I'll fast forward this bit that's both pieces scored and I actually used the wider end of the scoring tool so I'll move that aside and bash my light again now I'm going to fold these concertina style so back and forth the whole way along okay well now I've got these two concertina pieces I have to put a little bit of the tear and tape at the end of each piece to fit them together now this is going to hang off slightly but that is fine because what I will do I will fold it back on itself and now you can hear music because I think my daughter's left her bed or my husband's left my daughter's bedroom door open and she's got music on while she sorts through her clothes it's spring here now so we're actually or she's actually doing a little bit of spring cleaning okay we'll pop that down and bring that into the crease and just put those two pieces together and that will actually go together really well there and then we're going to do exactly the same thing at the other end so in with the tear and tape doesn't matter if it doesn't go all the way to the end on one side because it will be hidden so off with the backing if I can get my nails what little nail I have at the moment that's the other thing about coming out of lockdown they might open up the nail salons and my nails won't be as thin as paper again okay now because of this being a circle I need to lift this up to fit the two pieces together and there we go so we have a complete circle now to get this to work all I need to do or all I should need to do is press this down <laughs> it doesn't want to work okay there we go and we have a really nice little rosette now it's not going to stay down as it is as you can see so what I'm going to do is bring in a scrap 
of Whisper White. Actually, I've got wider pieces here that aren't Whisper White. And I'm going to bring in... Now, Stampin' Up! doesn't have these smaller punches anymore. This one is an inch wide punch. That's a bit too big. But I will bring in my three quarter punch. And for ladies over here who want to get these smaller punches that Stampin' Up! doesn't have anymore, you can get them from Lingcraft. That's for you ladies here in Australia. Okay, so I've got to bring in my stamp and seal again and put some um, stamp and seal on there just across piece and then once again oh, what I might do is do it this way like so push it all together so that you've got a smaller hole as possible in the center there then bring your piece in and just pop it over the top like so and give it a good press down it <laughs> doesn't want to stick <laughs> have you ever had one of those days <laughs> okay we'll try this again probably should have used some um liquid glue that might have worked a bit better but that's okay we're going to press that down and then what i might do is bring in because it's still wanting to come up i'm going to put some liquid glue in that little hole in the middle there okay there we go pop that aside for a moment and I'm going to squish that together there we go that's a bit better now while that's still wet I have an inch wide piece of silver foil that I cut out with my hole punch so what I might do is stick I need half a dozen hands here don't I oh does not want to separate okay so we're going to come in there we go and I think that's about in the middle there is easier ways of making rosettes I'm sure of it okay so I'm going to have those nicely concertinaed all the way around and what I might do is put a heavy block on that to keep it in place for a moment bring this little piece in and I'm going to put a bit of seal on here oh I don't want it sticking to the block and there we go pop that in the middle give this a really good press this the glue will harden over time what I might do is peel this piece off and put a little bit more glue on the back oh it's coming out again <laughs> oh, I've really made this look so much harder than it actually is okay <laughs> oh I'm amusing myself even if I'm not amusing anybody else okay pop that to the side we're going to bring our card back in and I have my card base here now the rosette is actually going to sit fairly central because I want to be able to have um I want to be able to have it so that it fits inside the um, envelope so I'm going to come in with my dimensionals they are here flip that over and let's layer five or six dimensionals on the back here now do I have it that way or that way I prefer it with the apex to the top Okay, so we're going to find the fairly central area there and give that a good press down. 
Now, while we're still waiting for this to harden, I'm going to move that to the side and I'm going to bring in a paper scrap. And what I want to do, I have mounted on two blocks. I have for you, which is going to be for the bag and happy and birthday for the card. So I'm going to, I was going to do Knight of Navy for the greeting, but instead I know it's Purple Posy that's used on the paper, but I'm going to use Highland Heather which is a darker shade in my opinion and I'm going to stamp happy whoops and then stamp birthday and see if I can get them to line up fairly straightly no okay so we'll pop that aside <laughs> ah the joys of filming on the fly okay I'm bringing this closer to me so I can actually get a better view from over the top. And what I'm going to do, I've decided <laughs> instead of trying to line them up, I'm going to have them staggered on the card so it doesn't matter that they don't line up. See, there's always wiggle room. Always. Okay, bring that piece back in and I'm just going to stamp for you. close that up and then I'm going to come in and what I'm going to do is banner the end of this one but I need to trim it down so I want those sides straight and then the same with the happy birthday I'm just going to do straight and straight and I've just realized birthday is not straight on the paper I'm going to leave our for you over there and what I'm going to do hopefully this has hardened slightly what I'm going to do is come in and just lather the back of it so that it will stick to the card well close that over as you can see there's lots of glue on the back there and I'm just going to pop that in the center of the card make sure it is the center and then our happy and birthday should sit on either side like that I'm quite happy with the way this is turning out so far so I'm going to come in okay camera turned off okay come in just put oh, on have you seen the mistake I've made here not doing it on my silicon mat so I ended up with it all over my pad there we go so there's happy and what I'm going to do is come in with my craft knife and stick the happy to the craft knife so that I can try and get the placement where I want it okay so there's one and I've tried to give it about an eighth of an inch border there and there give that a good press down and then come in with birthday and hopefully do the same thing there we go now if you wanted these to stand up more you could actually put the map them on a darker color or an opposing color either the green or the night of uh, the coastal cabana or the night of navy just to give it a bit more lift or you could just put them on dimensionals but i'm quite happy and i knew birthday was going to be underneath the rosette so i didn't want to put dimensionals underneath it but there we go there's our card finished now I'm going to bring in our bag again and you won't be seeing me use this ribbon anymore because this is the last of it. I'm finally at the end of the silver ribbon so what I need to do, I need a nice sharp pair of scissors and all of my fabric scissors have disappeared. 
Okay, I needed to point the end so that it will go through nicely. I'm going to give that a twist. Come through this side. <laughs> and it's all starting to to go thread thread it's unthread itself. Okay. Come in. Give this a tie so that it stays together. And this is where I'm going to attempt a really cack handed bow. There we go. Might just trim slightly. I want to keep as much of the length of the ribbon as I can because I think it looks nice having it dangling. Now, I think that's still a bit too long so just trim a bit more off there we go that sits nicely and I might put the the bow to the side so that piece hangs off nicely I really like the way that's looking you'll see it in better in the photos but when it stands up it's hanging really nicely okay now where did my little for you go I think that's looking a bit small Maybe what I need to do is another rosette. Okay, I'm going to fast forward through this one. And I'm going to make it a little bit smaller than what we already have. Okay, we're back. Our rosette is nicely done. Took me a while, but I got there. And what I'm going to do is pop it down here in the bottom. But as you just saw, I brought in my trimmer and my banner punch, and I just bannered the end of these two pieces. I'm going to cut them in half, slightly off halves, halfway, and I'm going to pop them down like that and glue the top ends together like so and just trim the top whoops trim the top end because that will stick behind the, the back of the rosette okay so we will bring in some more of the stamp and seal and I'm just going to layer the end of that quite heavily with the stamp and seal on one side and <laughs> if I can flip it over and on the other side okay so we're going to pop that like that whoops and I've almost put it on upside down there we go so it's like that peel it off the silicon mat and I'm just going to pop that on the bottom there okay so that's not going to move now where did my for you go that I said was too small because now it's just the right size and <laughs> I've misplaced it okay in with the um Highland Heather again. Can you see it anywhere on my desk? There it is. It's upside down. Okay. In with the Highland Heather. In with the For You. And I'm just going to stamp that there again. Close that up. And then trim this up again. I'm not going to banner the end of it this time because I've decided it's going somewhere else. Okay, in with my glue dots. And I just need one glue dot. And then that can go in the center like that. Okay, so get rid of all of this. In with a nice clean board and there we go 
there is our <laughs> it doesn't want to sit this hang on if we pop that under there will it sit properly now no it still won't okay I'm just going to pop that under there for now okay it does sit really nicely when it's standing up okay so there's our card and our gift bag for today i hope you like it and you give it a go um don't forget the um all of the products apart from this ribbon can be bought down below in my shopping cart so oh apart from the two punches that is uh but yeah I hope you like these and you'll give them a go. And that's all from me for today. I will see you on Friday with another festive Friday. I'm not sure whether I'm doing a fancy fold or just a normal one. I've got a week of sewing to go through. Okay, that's it. I'll see you later. Bye-bye.